Hi, I'm Polly. Some of you may remember me from the second grade field trip at Long Pond. Do you remember the dream I had about meeting three clever macro invertebrates? I learned that each one had special adaptations for surviving and living in a pond ecosystem with pond plants and other pond creatures. Hello, Polly here again. I'm a little older now, just like you. And I'm here with my friend Maya to tell you about some things we learned in school about keeping ponds healthy and protecting the pond ecosystem. We're at a place called Turtle Pond, doing some pond dipping for our final science project of the year. But before we get started, I have a surprise for you. I brought my pond critter friends back and they are going to perform the pond critter rap. Listen up now. Pond critters here with a story to share all about ponds and we need you to care. A pond is a place where insects abound. To get to know us, just stick around. We share our homes with plants and animals, fish and reptiles, birds and mammals. When ponds are healthy, we all will thrive. We need your help so we can survive. Come join our friends and you'll find out what the Turtle Pond Mystery's all about. The clues we discover are everywhere. Hey, be aware and dare to care. Pond dipping assignment is really fun. Look, Maya, I found a crayfish. Cool catch, Polly. It looks like I found three damselfly nymphs. Mr. Donovan said that's a sign that the pond is probably healthy because a damselfly nymph doesn't survive for long in a polluted pond. Hey, look, here comes Tyrell and there's somebody with him. I guess he must be feeling better. He missed a few days of school because he was sick and he went to see his doctor. Hi, Polly and Maya. This is my new friend, Carlos. He just moved to the neighborhood. Hi, Carlos. Hi, Carlos. We're pond dipping for our final science project of the year. What is pond dipping? Pond dipping is when you scoop up samples of pond water and look for different kinds of pond critters. See, we found a water boatman a whirligig beetle, and a damselfly nymph. Mr. Donovan taught us that they are macroinvertebrates, tiny animals without backbones. The kind of macroinvertebrates in a pond can tell us whether the habitat and water quality are good for the pond creatures, like fish and birds and reptiles. Whoa, let me see. They look very small, but it sounds like they're very important. By the way, Tyrell, how are you feeling? What did the doctor say? I'm better now, but I had a fever and an awful sore throat, especially when I swallowed. The doctor swabbed my throat and took a culture. Then she said I had spots, called it strep throat, and gave me some yucky medicine. That stinks, but I'm glad you're better now. We missed you at recess. Wow, this pond is beautiful. We didn't have ponds like this where I lived before. And I can't wait to go swimming and boating. Same here. Tyrell, remember last year when they closed the beach at the end of the summer because they said the pond was unhealthy? We couldn't swim or have sailing lessons. That was a bummer. Yeah, that was awful. How did they know the pond had a problem? Maybe there are clues that a pond is sick. We need a pond doctor. Hmm. 
Hey, I have an idea. Let's all be sleuths and try to find clues that might tell us why a pond is unhealthy. Sleuth? You know, work together like detectives to solve the mystery of the unhealthy pond. Sounds good to me. I want to do some exploring around this pond anyway. On our way here, I noticed someone left some trash on the beach. That wouldn't be good if it got into the pond. Pond animals could get sick from it, or some, like fish or turtles, could get tangled in it. I'm going to come back with a trash bag and gloves and pick it all up. Hey, I saw a sign that said, don't feed the ducks. Are ducks bad for the pond? I thought it was their home, too. I'm going to find out why that sign is there. There was another sign that said, scoop poop, and had little doggy bags with it. These are some good clues, guys, and there are probably more. Let's do some more exploring this week and see what else we can find. I'm going to ask my mom to call the town and see if anyone there can tell us why the beach was closed last year. I'll show Carlos around the pond, and we can look for other clues. Maybe if everyone pays more attention, we can all help to keep the beach open all summer this year. Okay, let's meet back here next Saturday morning at 10 o'clock and report what we found out. I heard it's supposed to rain in the next couple of days, but Saturday should be nice. Hi guys, did you all discover more clues as to why Turtle Pond was closed last summer? Let's try to solve this mystery. Yeah, Terrell and I found more trash, and some had gone into the water. We also noticed some people didn't scoop their dog poop. Oh man, I almost stepped in some. Gross! I have some news. When my mom called the town, she found out the beach was closed last summer because of an algal bloom. And this is what I learned. An algal bloom looks gross, usually green like pea soup or scum. But it can also be other colors, too, like blue-green, brown, and sometimes red. Someone who lives on our pond saw one last summer and reported it. That's why the beach was closed. Yuck! I guess I wouldn't want to go into the pond if it looked like pea soup. But how do you know it's unhealthy? When you were sick, Tyrell, your doctor looked for symptoms that weren't normal, like your rash and you had a fever. In a pond, you can also see if something looks different. It may look cloudy or have patches of green scum that float on the surface. It may also have a bad smell. If you think you see an algal bloom, tell your parents or a neighbor so they can report it. Someone can check it out and test it for toxins. Some blooms can make people and animals sick. If you think you see an algal bloom, don't swim or play in it. Don't let your dog swim in it or drink the water. But what causes an algal bloom? Remember we learned in science class that algae in ponds are part of the pond food chain? This type of algae is important and good for our ponds. Another type of blue-green algae in freshwater ponds is called cyanobacteria, and that produces toxins. It can grow quickly, sometimes forming harmful algal blooms. This can happen when there are too many nutrients coming into the pond from garden and lawn fertilizers, leaves, and sometimes septic systems. Other causes can be animal waste and lots of droppings from ducks. That's why there were signs on the beach that said, don't feed the ducks and scoop poop. Oh yeah, that reminds me. After it rained, Tyrell and I noticed that a big gully formed and there was lots of water running down the hill onto the beach and into the pond. It could have been carrying fertilizer and leaves. Not good for ponds. Algal blooms also use up oxygen in the water. Without oxygen, fish and other pond animals in the water die. Bad for pond ecosystems. But we have some good news, too. Carlos and I discovered a rain garden. It was really cool. The neighbors working there said the rain garden was made up of native plants because they grow best in our Cape Cod soil. 
Rain gardens collect rainwater runoff, like what Carlos and I saw running down the gully. It helps keep bad nutrients from getting into the pond. Birds, bees, and butterflies love the native plants, too. Wow, I've learned a lot. Good work, sleuths. We need to tell others. How about we form a pond eco club and ask friends to join us? Let's get everyone together next Saturday morning near the rain garden. We can call our group the Pond Protectors Club. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us at this beautiful rain garden for our first Pond Protectors Club meeting. We have so many beautiful ponds around us, but sometimes people do things that make them unhealthy for us and for all the special wildlife that live in and around our ponds. Maya, Tyrell, and I learned during our science project that ponds are fragile ecosystems. We discovered how people can create problems and that there are things we can each do to help keep ponds healthy. Here are a few things that kids can do. Think of the word ponds to help you remember. P. Pick up trash. O. Observe and learn all you can about ponds. N. Never feed ducks or other wild animals. D. Do scoop dog poop. S. Stay on established trails and beaches. If we all work together, even though we are kids, we can spread the word to family and friends and really make a difference. Let's, Let's, Let's all, all be, be pond protectors. protectors. Here to help us get started is our friend from Turtle Pond with his latest rap. Thank you, thank you. So, care for our ponds, it's the cool thing to do. Tell your friends and families too. A healthy pond is sustainable, and with your help, it's attainable. So, be aware and dare to care. 